everyone, I'm Jen, and today I'm going to be talking about the five frequently asked questions that I get asked as a woman living solo in a van. Number one question that I get asked almost every time I tell someone I do van life is, how do you go to the bathroom? How? As a female, it is a little bit more of a challenge. Ladies, We've all done the squat. When you gotta go, you gotta go. My friend actually got me this device. If you're not comfortable squatting or you need a little assistance, the Shiwi is something that will help you. So it's a little funnel device and what you do is you kind of cup it around your lady parts and then it allows you to pee not unlike a boy. And it also comes with this extension that you can put on the end in case you want to make sure that it's going in the direction where it needs to go. It is really great for kind of hiding what you're trying to do in the woods. Now let's talk about something that takes a little more time probably and a little more thought. If I am on primitive campground or I'm camping somewhere where there's not readily a toilet, I kind of scout out my area before I go, make sure, make sure that it is away from a water source. There are plenty of articles on Google that will tell you how to find the perfect spot to go number two out in the wilderness. I won't get into it here, but I'll drop it below. What I do is I dig little hole. Usually I try to wait for the cover of nightfall. You just drop trow as usual. Again, you gotta get used to squatting. So I don't know what kind of exercises you need to do for this. I don't know if you really need to like get into that squat power mode your body will figure it out if you have to go bad enough trust me it will byo toilet paper always byo toilet paper but pack it out as a dog owner i usually have some nice biodegradable bags on hand so i'll kind of throw my toilet paper in those i don't really like to pack in toilet paper with my thing that i'm leaving behind because it's just another thing that the earth has to break down. Although I'm not super positive that biodegradable bags are that much better either. Be respectful of your environment, be respectful of the people around you, and be respectful of your own body, okay? So leave no trace. Buckets, 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 buckets. You can get them from Home Depot. There are a lot of tutorials on how to use them as a number two device. Humanity has been living without plumbing for most of its existence. You can do it too. It just takes a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of ingenuity and maybe flexibility if you're not that good at squatting. Second question I get asked all the time, what about feminine hygiene or hygiene in general? Well, ladies, I'm here to tell you that for myself, I am predisposed to certain things that make it a little bit of a challenge when it comes to van life. Talking. And it happens, okay? Some women are just prone to them and that's okay. That's just how life is. What you need to do, ladies, is you always need to make sure you are staying clean in general. So usually campgrounds will have some kind of a shower. If you don't have access to a regular shower, I personally have a little bladder shower and I have one of those tents that you can expand and it opens up and you can put the bladder shower on top and you can wash yourself that way. The only problem is that you kind of want to let the water warm a little bit so if you're able set it on your van or set it somewhere where it can soak up some of the rays of the sun throughout the day and as i said before humanity has not had modern plumbing for most of its existence there is a fun little thing called a bucket shower and you can do that too it has a little bit of a drain on the inside so i pop it open you can fill this with water and then you can take some soap and a washcloth, dunk it in, clean yourself. Dunk it in, clean yourself. People have been doing it for centuries and I mean, it works in a pinch. Now, if you're just trying to spot clean or anything like that, you just feel a little bit dingy, you wanna make sure you're feeling fresh. I always have unscented wipes with me. I personally like the ones that are flushable even though I don't really flush them just because you know they're kind of made for that downstairs area. But also just water on a paper towel or a cloth is perfectly fine. This whole area is made to sort of clean itself. 
but whenever that time of the month does come around, I like to be a little more eco-friendly. I tend to use period panties. You just deal with it like any woman would that's not in a van. You can use the same feminine hygiene products. You can use tampons, you can use pads, you can use anything like that. Just make sure that if you are using them, wherever you're camping, wherever you're staying, you are packing them out with you and you are disposing of them properly, properly, properly. Number three in the questions that I often get asked, what about a beauty routine? And arguably, women do tend to spend more in the cosmetic industry. We are a little bit more concerned with that stuff overall. Not to say that there's not men that don't do that or that it's not acceptable. It totally is. You do you. So I do have a couple little tips and tricks for those of you trying to stay cute while you're on the road. In the beginning, I built out an entire vanity set for myself thinking that I'm totally going to use this all the time. This is going to be something that I can go to, to primp up, to make sure I'm feeling good. You know what? I rarely ever use it. This shelf gets used for cooking most of the time and I end up doing my makeup in just the rear view mirror or the little fold down mirror that I have in the front seat. In terms of hair, if you are lucky enough to be at a campground that has electric and showers, you can use a blow dryer, but I've just gotten used to the air dry thing and I think it works fine because you're exposing your hair to less heat anyway, so you just kind of get used to it. Learn to love the messy hair button when you are in van life. I do have a converter and something that plugs into that little cigarette thing or whatever that thing is for. I actually have no idea. And I can use my straightener with it. However, the straightener takes up a lot of power. So this thing will shut off once it gets too hot or if it's using too much power. So I know that if I am totally straightening my hair, I only have so long to actually do it. While we're on the topic of hair, I am not one of those people that washes their hair every day. I'm sorry to say, I'm just not. My hair gets really, really dry and brittle if I do that. I go with a little bit of dry shampoo every once in a while, and then I wash it. Honestly, I know this might sound crazy to some of you, but it works for me. I wash it about once a week or so. Always, always, always remember if you are doing your makeup and you're looking cute for the day and everything, you do want to make sure you're taking it off at night. So I always keep some makeup wipes next to my bed. I'm one of those people that will just kind of acquire whatever people are trying to get rid of. So I have a lot of beauty products that I just kind of sporadically use. I don't have a particular skincare routine because again, I just kind of take on whatever everyone else gives me. Before I get off this topic, I know women tend to be a little more cognizant about shaving. If you are not like that, fair enough. You do you. Again, it's your choice. It's your body. You can do what you want. I do like to shave everything. And this is a warning for anyone that is using communal showers. I thought that I was being really, really clean. I would use Lysol wipes to wipe down anything that I used in a shower, a communal shower after I was done. I was using a gym shower because it was only five bucks to use their facilities in the city that I was in. Also, always wear your flip flops. Don't ever just go into a shower facility willy nilly with bare feet. That is how you get a fungus. Please, please, please wear flip flops or shower shoes or something when you're in there. I was using just a regular safety razor. That was what I was normally used to using. I was trying to be environmentally friendly, but I nicked myself a couple of times. And somehow I ended up with a staph infection. Luckily, it was curable with just a topical. I didn't have to do anything too crazy. It was no emergency hospital stay, but it was really, really, really scary. So now I use an electric razor. You can pick up something like this. I think I got this from CVS or something in my paranoia about not getting staff again. It's battery operated, so I don't have to charge it, which is great. The heads tend to last quite a while, so I might have to switch them out or replace them every six months or so, but it's really not too bad. So again, if you're trying to be cognizant about germs, I recommend shaving before you even get into a shower or a communal area because that is one big way that staff can get in. And I'm not trying to make you paranoid, but it happened to me, so just be aware. Now on to a big, big, big topic that is kind of the reason why I think a lot of women shy away from this lifestyle, and it is safety. You should do what you want to do and be able to go out there and have fun. However, let's talk about the reality of the situation. Wherever I go, I like to stay in places that have a little 
bit more people around, even though I'm not necessarily a people person. So if I'm urban camping, I kind of sketch out the area. I check out the area before I park. A lot of the times I find that if you park near a church or a library or something like that, it's kind of still residential. There are still people around, but you can stay a little bit more stealth that way. They think you're just kind of a worker or a moving van or something like that. To also stay stealth is I don't have a lot of stuff on my van to tell people that I am a van lifer. Also, you can check out campgrounds and their ratings even before you get somewhere. A lot of primitive campgrounds and dispersed campgrounds have this as well, where you can just check on their ratings and see if you feel safe. And in terms of weaponry, yes, I do carry mace and I carry a knife and I have a taser. I'm not going to tell you where I keep them because that's personal. That's classified. So I'm not telling you to get a taser. What I am saying is however you feel you need to be protected, you do that. I love my dog. He is a very scary bark. He will alert me to anything. So I'm not saying go get a dog just for van life, but if you have one, it's really helpful. So when I go to bed at night, what I make sure that I do is I make sure that my doors are locked and I make sure that I have some kind of weaponry or something within easy access of my bed. And I also make sure that my keys are on my person. I do not leave them in the ignition. A lot of people tend to do this. I actually, I don't know someone, but a friend of a friend had her keys in the ignition while she was taking a nap in the back. Somebody broke in and started driving with her in the back, unbeknownst to them, trying to steal a car. Now, if you need to get away from somewhere, somebody's banging on your car, there's something sketchy happening, get to the front seat, turn the ignition, and honk your horn as loud as you can. If anything, it's gonna be really jarring to the person trying to get into your van, and as you pull away or as you back out or whatever you need to do, it does alert people to that area. I always keep my phone on me too, but I feel like that's kind of, I meant to mention that, but I feel like that's kind of a given. What I do is I will stop at a gas station, I will top up, make sure that I have gas, and I will walk my dog, I'll go to the bathroom, I'll do all of the nightly things that I need to do, like brush my teeth and everything, before I even get to the rest stop. And then once I get to that rest stop, I can literally just park it, and then lock the doors, go to bed. It just makes you less likely to be noticed as a solo female traveler. Here's another tip too. When you go into a camping spot, any kind of parking spot, I like to back in. I like to give myself an easy way to get out. So I don't care if you embarrass yourself, you've paid a lot of money, or the view is really great. If you feel skeeved out, if it doesn't feel right, trust your gut, ladies. Trust your gut. Do not stay there. I cannot stress that enough. And now for the last little bit. People often ask me, as a solo female van lifer, do you ever get lonely? You know, at first, I think it was kind of tough for me. And it's actually taught me to like to be alone with myself more. I actually got more into reading. I was able to finish all of the Southern Vampire Mysteries. I love Charlene Harris. This is what the True Blood is based off of, the True Blood TV series. I have my animals with me, so I can't say that I'm ever truly, truly alone. But in terms of companionship, it can be a little bit tricky. But I think genuinely this has made me get more out of my shell. I'll usually just kind of sit up at a bar and I'll talk to whoever's there. And it's been a really, really cool time to just experience people from all walks of life from all over the place. So I can't say that I'm ever really lonely, but I do kind of like being alone a little bit more. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please like, please subscribe. And if you have any other questions for me, I'm happy to answer them either in the comments or maybe in another video. I'll see you out there.